Hello and welcome. This is uh, my attempt to explain Filter Playground, which is a recent side project of mine. So let's jump right in. Check this thing out. This is a what I'm calling a filter wizard where you can generate all sorts of different kinds of filters, which are in this case uh, biquad filters, which means two poles and two zeros. Uh, here is the equation for said filter. Right now it's uh, we've, I think, just picked a low pass uh, one pole filter and uh, moving on here there's a uh, pole zero diagram a Bode plot a complex 3D view and then the analyzer node output from the web audio graph of playing a pink noise sample through this guy oh so we're muted right now let me just turn off the muted flag this is a little hacky but bear with me okay so let's try to make Okay, so you can actually hear this uh, noise. That's the that's pink noise being played through the filter. You can see its uh, frequency response here, and you can also hear it. All right, cool. So let me um, show you how this thing works by building a bandpass filter. So I'll switch to bandpass here, keep the sample rate, change the center frequency to whatever, 500 hertz, and leave the rest of the values. Hit generate. You can see... Um, Basically, that we have a uh, the equation for the filter, the transfer function equation is here. You can see that we can edit it. So let me just change some values a little bit, just for fun. Move some zeros around. Change the pole here. Whoa, okay, it's a little loud. All right, so you can uh, you can see now uh, what happened is we have this giant peak as a result of our tweaking uh, and it's a very narrow band here that we're allowing to pass the rest of which we are attenuating so um, the other place we can tweak things is using the pole zero plot directly so in this case let me just move this zero out here you can see it affected some things I'll move this zero here and um, I can add additional poles and zeros so let me just place a couple here you move it around, you can see they move around in, conju in complex conjugate pairs. I can even have like a multi band pass filter here. So, what we end up with is a fairly complex fourth order filter. Uh, you can see it reflected in the equation here. I can also remove poles and zeros by just dragging them far enough out of the unit circle. And let's see, yeah, that's, that's it for this uh, pole zero diagram. In terms of the Bode plot, well, how do we generate this is an interesting question. Uh, I'll get back to that in a sec, but let me first explain this guy, which is the complex 3D view. Uh, hold on, let me just decrease the attenuation. Oh, one thing I can show you is that's interesting is uh, you can look at these pole positions as, uh, in terms of the complex plane, this is the real axis, this is the imaginary axis, and you can see that I'm able to, if you, if you think of the complex value here um, in terms of polar form, so the angle here along the unit circle, so this is 0 and then this is pi, uh, you can see that the angle affects the, the frequency, the center frequency of this, of this bandpass filter. So you can see as I'm increasing the angle, the center frequency is also increasing. And then let's bring it back here to the lowest angle. And then if I if I change the amplitude, so here let's pick let's pick this one angle that we're gonna stick to, this one. And then I'll just decrease, bring closer to the origin. So you can see that the further the closer we are to the unit circle, the further out, the uh, more extreme the attenuation for the non-centered frequencies and then the closer to the origin the less this filter will actually do. Um, and if we exceed, if we go outside the unit circle uh, we can't do that. Uh, it'll, lead, it'll lead to an unstable transfer function so uh, it won't even attempt to play that back because it would probably ruin your ears. Um, okay so this here is the complex 3D view of the transfer function. So the way to interpret it is we have a complex plane, again this is mirroring the pole zero plot above, 
actually, let me switch it into pole zero view so you can get a better sense. So we can see the same zeros and the same poles here. This is the complex plane. And then we just plot the surface by taking the magnitude of the transfer function, which is this guy, and plotting that magnitude for all complex values. We end up with this pretty um, picture, but it's only pretty because of the colors. The colors are generated based on the phase of the output, which just means like the angle of the complex value. So not the magnitude, but the angle. And uh, we, we won't talk much more about phase because it's not relevant for uh, most music processing or audio applications. Now there's a last thing I want to show you is a cool relationship between this transfer function view and the Bode plot, which is that um, if we take the unit circle, the way we generate this Bode plot in the first place is we look at the magnitude of the transfer function of the unit circle. So let me just decrease, make it a little bit less extreme so you can see the circle better. Okay, so so here you can see the unit circle, this is zero and this is pi. So if we start from zero and go to pi, um, we can sort of we can see how this maps directly to the uh, transfer function. So here, uh, actually let's start, I guess zero in this case would be would be zero is here, so zero. We have to go really close here to the to the to the origin, and then as we move out away from it, you can see exactly that like the this transfer function uh, in the body sorry the frequency response in the body plot will map pretty closely to this. Except this is skewed because it's a log value plot, whereas this is not log. Um, this is just a linear plot. And also, it's skewed because of this, you know, the this circular nature of this. So you can think of the Bode plot as sort of half circle, unwrapped view, which gives you the frequency response. Um, right, and then this, of course, is the you know full description of what pink noise looks like, the frequency response of it, uh, based on the web audio view. Anyway, I hope this gives you a pretty a uh, high level overview of what the filter playground is for and uh, I hope it helps you build intuition like it helped me um, so I'll catch you later thank you